So the first beam to analyze, or the first model to analyze is a deep beam, one meter deep. The width of the beam is one meter. Length of the beam is 10 meter. Young's model is 200 MPa. Poisson's ratio is 0.3. The loading is 400 kilonewton. The beam is symmetric, so I'm gonna model only half the beam. I'm gonna apply symmetry boundary conditions on this line and uh, uh, fixed boundary condition on this line and I'm gonna apply half the load 200 kilonewton so I'm gonna start abacus a new model the first thing is to create a part so double click part part one is 2d deformable and it's a shell the approximate size of the first sketch is about 10 meter and then continue so because of symmetry we can model half the beam so I'm gonna click on uh, so this is a sketch a two-dimensional sketch I will uh, create a rectangle I'm gonna start it zero zero and then put x of five since I'm gonna model half the beam and y of one and here is the rectangle I'm just gonna zoom out uh, and then to cancel the procedure and done so this is the part in the part module if you click here um, at the bottom here is where you mesh it so I'm gonna click on the mesh first I have to assign the mesh controls there are different types of meshing techniques first I'm gonna use quad you can use free structured or sweep for this particular geometry since the geometry is very regular I will choose to use structured free meshing is better for uh, irregular geometries structured meshes are better for regular geometries I'm gonna press OK so this is the mesh controls I have to seat the part I have to define some sort of an average size for the elements so I clicked on seat part the approximate size let's say the uh, size of the element let's say 0.2 apply okay then I need to define my element type assign element type I'm gonna use plane stress there's quadratic or linear, I'm gonna use linear I'm not gonna uh, use reduced integration so this is where you click on reduced integration uh, this is where you set it up for reduced integration alright and then finally mesh the part okay to mesh the part yes so this is the mesh after that you need to define the material properties so I'm gonna click on the material so it's elastic Young's modulus is 200 and uh, I'm gonna use uh, Pascal units so 200 times 10 power 6 so 1 2 3 4 5 6 Poisson's ratio of 0.3 After creating materials I need to assign sections so I'm gonna create a section this is a solid plane stress and plane strain elements are solids so this is a solid here I say which material so it's material one the one I just created and the thickness is one next after creating the section you need to assign 
I'm gonna select the part and I'm gonna assign section 1 to it okay now if you don't do this then you create a section and you create a material but it's not linked to your part so you really have to bef uh, before going on to the next step you need to uh, link the section to the part afterwards the assembly uh, module in the assembly module so in the assembly module first you have to uh, uh, input the part so I'm gonna click on instance I'm gonna bring part one uh, alright so this is the assembly we're only we only have one uh, load step the first one is to define uh, boundary conditions that stay along the whole uh, throughout the whole um, uh, loading uh, process I'm going to create a, a new step. I'm going to call it loading. It's static and it's general. I'm going to use the nonlinearity in the geometry. This is the total time is one. The increment, the initial increment size, I'm going to set it up at 0.1 this is the maximum number of increments allowed alright now in this step I'm gonna define the loads and the boundary conditions the load there are different types of loading what I'm gonna put is a concentrated load or concentrated force I'm going to put the concentrated force on this node. Select points, done. This is in the direction 2. Negative. Uh, negative 200. I'm using half the load because I'm uh, dividing the structure into two. This is using symmetry. So negative 200 kPa, so negative 200. Uh, sorry, uh, kilonewton, negative 200 uh, multiplied by 10 power 3 newtons 1, 2, 3 alright, and the boundary conditions create boundary conditions the first is symmetry continue select the regions symmetry on this, done it's symmetric around X uh, sorry around Y so U1 is equal to 0 and the second boundary conditions is um, I'm gonna choose displacement rotation select the regions this one done and the boundary conditions are u1 is 0, u2 0 doesn't really matter if you set u th uh, the rotation or not since we're using solid elements those solid elements do not have rotation degrees of freedom so it really doesn't matter so I'm just gonna leave it blank alright so I define my loads, my boundary conditions the next step finally I have to create a job so double click here I'm going to call this one. Continue. All right, and I'm going to right-click here and submit. So after submitting, good job check the bottom here because if, if for any error messages and it says here job one completed successfully 
When a job is completed successfully, uh, the output um, file is has an extension of ODB, which is our output database. So I'm going to open and the I'm going to open the ODB, which is output database. The job that I created, I called it once. So this is the output database file. All right. So you can view a few things. This is the deformation, and you can see how um, the boundary conditions are satisfied. You can plot different uh, things. So for example, let's, and you can plot multi plots. So the first thing I'd like you to notice is the stresses. So let's, uh, I'm going to click on results, field output. There are a few things that you can uh, uh, plot. You've got S, the various uh, stress components S11, S22, S33, S12 of course 1 being X, 2 being Y, 3 being Z and you can also plot the stress invariance maximum in plane, minimum in plane, out of plane principle and all those so I'm just gonna choose to plot the stress in the X direction apply or OK or contour plot now, a very important aspect of finite element analysis is that the stresses, while they appear continuous, they are not really continuous. Unless your approximation or your element size are really um, small. So, I just want you to click or see that if I click on results and options, and if I change uh, the averaging to zero, apply. You can see that the stresses are not really continuous between elements, but the approximation is good enough. If I want to find the deflection, for example, there are different ways I can use the query node this node and it gives me the displacement displacement in X displacement in Y so the displacement in Y is negative 1.366 times 10 power negative 1 now we can plot for example the displacement versus load so in order to do this I will have to create an XY plot or XY data a field output output database field output continue let's nodes find the nodes the magnitude of let's say the deflection U1 pick the node and its selection this node done sorry u2 rather than u1 that's the vertical displacement plot dismiss and then I'm gonna go to report this data XY XY plot in current view port I'm gonna click this one which is the displacement curve the setup I'm gonna call it let's say one dot report and I'm not gonna append to file apply cancel so it says here the XY report was written to file one dot rpt and I, let's create a, another file with the stresses so I'm going to create another XY first I'm going to view 
the deformed shape and again create XY data continue that's for example plot maybe I can plot the logarithmic strain or the stresses or whatever let's um, I'm gonna choose the stresses at the centroid of an element the stress let's say the S11, S22 and S33 and S12 I'm not gonna plot the S33 for plane stress is 0 so I don't need that and let's say for this element at the centroid of the element plot oh I need to take this out so S11, S22, S12 plot dismiss and I can also choose those three and stresses dot rpt okay and this was written to file stresses to rpt I can also do other things I can animate so for example I can animate the deformation scale factor or time history so this is as the load is applied and you can save this as a, an AVI file for your presentations I can also print so I can let's say the stresses I can print to a file for use on your presentations or for any of your um, uh, assignments for example so you can print to a TIFF image and uh, save it to uh, any file the last thing is to uh, plot your stress strain curve or your uh, or whatever your load displacement curve on Excel so we created the report files I need to input them into Excel so I'm gonna open and I know that my working directory my abacus working directory is c slash temp the first file is one.rpt fixed width next just make sure that uh, that this line defines the uh, the difference between the two cells and finish X is the time this is arbitrary and the load was ramped with the time so I can put the load here I know that the maximum load at time 1 was equal to 200 uh, or so 200 um, kilo newton so the load is 0 the load is percentage of 200 so this is the load displacement curve and the displacement is negative I'm also going to open the stresses file so stresses dot rpt make sure that uh, the cells are separated finish so this is S11, S12, S22 again this is the time and from this time I can relate those stresses to the load 